Just how well is the 2020 M1 MacBook Air aging? If you bought one of these laptops in the last few years, it's safe to say it could have been the best purchase you made this last half decade. Early adopters of the M1 MacBook Air weren't to know at the time, but this Apple Silicon powered machine went on to change the world of laptops irreversibly. Despite how it exploded onto the scene though, it's no perfect laptop, certainly not in 2024. There are some flaws the M1 MacBook Air has always had, flaws that no one can do much about. M1 MacBook Airs have just two Thunderbolt 3 ports. These are both capable of charging the machine, connecting to external displays, and using all sorts of accessories, but they remain the only ports on board beside the audio jack. Anyone needing to use more than two ports at once has no doubt hated this from the very start, but other problems arise from the lack of connectivity. As the only ports on board, they get used so much there's a good chance that they might fail over time. So port fatigue is a real thing. In fact, my MacBook Air already has one dodgy Thunderbolt port, which is a real bummer since it's the machine I have to edit all my videos on. If you're buying one of these used, make sure to check all of the ports work before you hand over your money. It's worth noting, replacing a part is fairly easily done in these machines, as there's no soldering required. You do have to be seriously careful though. The whole problem wouldn't even exist if Apple had put a slightly more robust connection inside of their 2020 lineup. One of the more surprising aspects of the M1 MacBook Air is the lack of any fans inside it. There's no spinning hard drive inside either, so it operates in total silence no matter when or where you use it. In the past, Apple only managed this with very weak processors. The 12-inch Retina MacBooks, which were sold from 2015 to 17, were fanless, but considerably weaker than the MacBook Pro and Air models of the same years. The 2020 MacBook Air features the same N1 chip as the 2020 MacBook Pro though. It's even got the same base amount of memory, with just one GPU core fewer than the Pro. So performance at release was almost identical between the two, and there's no doubt they were very powerful machines for 2020. That lack of fan is likely to catch up with it at some point though. Over time, operating systems become harder to run with more complex animations and features. The apps we all use every day also get harder to run, requiring more CPU power when features are added. If the processor in the M1 Air is consistently working harder to keep up with these changes, it will invariably become hotter. With no fan on board, it's only a matter of time until the maximum temperature is reached and the laptop thermally throttles, slowing the CPU down to give it time to cool down. We've seen this before with Intel MacBooks. The 2015 MacBook Pro, one of the most popular of all time, is now at an age where regular computing, like having a lot of internet tabs open while editing music in Logic or GarageBand software, might cause it to thermally throttle. That laptop has a fan on board, which has given the 2015 the power to stay cool for longer and operate pretty strongly up to a certain point. Remember, the M1 is fanless, and I've found on hotter days when I try to edit 4K footage in Final Cut, with Photoshop and my recording software open as well, it does slow down a little bit. The same will happen when I render long video projects too. Considering I edited my videos on a far slower 2012 machine until earlier this year, I'm certainly not complaining, but it's a surefire sign this thing isn't going to eat through any task one can throw at it forever. Yes, Apple Silicon machines including this one are far ahead of any Intel MacBook money can buy, but you'll definitely want to consider a newer MacBook Pro if you're a video editor or doing any other work which requires a lot of computing power. If you decide to buy an M1 MacBook Air, or indeed have one already, you've got to think about how the battery might have degraded over the last few years too. The M1 Air was sold by Apple from 2020 until the start of 2024, which really is an impressive run. If you have a recently made MacBook, you might still have under 100 charge cycles on your battery. But every time you charge your battery and use it down to empty, that count goes up by one. My M1 MacBook Air has 375 cycles on it at the moment, and the system report is telling me that the battery life is 88% as good as it was when new. Generally speaking, MacBook batteries are good for 800 to 1000 cycles before they absolutely need a replacement. But I've seen batteries all but fail before the 600 mark, and even seen some keep going fine past the 1500 mark. Unfortunately, replacing the battery is a relative pain in the arse. First, you'll need the right 5-point screwdriver to open up the case, then you'll need to remove some parts like the speakers and the audio board 
before you can actually get at the battery. There's adhesive strips keeping the battery in place too, which you need to remove with care. Replacing the battery is doable if you're careful, and I'll link a decent cool kit with everything you need to do so in the description, but it's still a pain Apple didn't make the internals of MacBooks more accessible for the average Joe. They'd certainly last a lot longer. Alright, so going back to the performance of the M1 MacBook Air, remember how I said apps are getting harder to run over time? The M1 MacBook Air's RAM, storage, and GPU are beginning to cause problems here too. 8GB of RAM is the base option for these laptops, and getting a 16GB model is either super expensive new, or super expensive and a wild goose chase used, thanks to how rare the upgraded models are. As you probably know, 16GB of RAM has become a more standard requirement for the latest games these days, as well as for running things like editing or 3D design software. It's not just the RAM holding you back though. The GPU on the M1 MacBook Air is the weakest on an Apple Silicon Mac. It's a 7-core model, and while it was seriously impressive back in 2020 compared to integrated chips of the time, SoCs and dedicated graphics processors have stiffened up the competition since. Using an M1 MacBook Air for games in 2024 is just not the move. You could build a gaming PC for half the price of the laptop with better graphics performance these days. 3D design software users would also benefit from using something with a far more powerful GPU. Not to mention, for those into visual arts, the 13-inch screen is a pretty poor choice. I get a window smaller than a small phone screen to watch my Final Cut previews on for these videos, which is kind of jarring. If you can, it's worth buying at least a 15-inch MacBook Air to do this kind of thing. One brief thing you should note is that the M1 Air is at least halfway through its life cycle of macOS updates at this point. Apple always supports its Macs for more than 5, but fewer than 10 years these days. I can confidently say this will be the case with the M1 MacBook Air. Your guess is as good as mine for the exact year they'll drop the updates for this machine, but just know that if you buy a newer MacBook, you probably will get a longer lifespan. I wouldn't worry too much about this personally, as I've always said macOS versions that are a couple of years old are still fine to use since they get security patches anyway. But bear in mind, the 2030 mark will probably be a bit of a brick wall for M1 support. Alright, so I've focused on the limitations the M1 MacBook Air might face so far, but let's not forget, this is still the king of all MacBooks in terms of value for money. In fact, it's quite possibly the best value of all laptops money can buy. There have been four years of improvements made to Apple Silicon, with several new releases from Apple each year. In some ways though, they haven't really majorly improved on the base M-series chips all that much. If you're not using your Mac for video editing or 3D work and that sort of thing, I can't recommend picking an M1 Air up enough. This thing will perform several times better than any 13-inch MacBook that came before it, and has been excellent for putting my YouTube channel together as well as helping me with my studies this past year. Yes, it can leave you wanting more at times, but the M1 MacBook Air is far from old news yet. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next week.